Hi everyone, hope you are all doing well and welcome back to another video on New World. So, making gold. This is going to be really a key part of the New World experience. Particularly, let's face it, in the first few days of the game. As everyone is not only going to be rushing for the sort of higher level equipment, but companies are going to be trying to buy towns. And that means they're going to be needing to raise 100,000 gold from their members. I mean, realistically, this is probably going to be happening on the first day, if not the first few hours. But you'll also be buying stuff like property, property tax, resources for leveling crafting and so on. So day one gold making and the few days beyond is going to be absolutely key. So where do we start? Well, this is going to be a little bit boring, but whatever your crafting and trading plans, your first thousand gold, realistically, is going to come from questing. You know, when you join a faction around sort of level 9, level 10, you will likely be just over 500 gold. And you should be hitting a thousand mark around level 15, if not earlier. You know, if you're going to go for a town, or even just trying to get your starting gold up, this is really the way to go before getting stuck into any of the sort of crafting or market trading side of things. As you've got to remember, everyone else is in the same boat, right? No one starts in New World with any gold. So if there is no gold in the economy, there really isn't any point in trying to command high prices for items on the market because no one else has any money. No one on the server can actually afford it. It's going to take the first few hours, or if not half a day or so, at least for the economy to begin to establish itself. Because once you get beyond that, once you start to get money from these quests into the system, that people can then start to splash the cash on equipment and tools from the auction house. And that's what I think we should be thinking about next. You know, what items are going to be commanding the highest prices on the market? What is it that's going to be best to craft for maximum profit, particularly in the first day or two? And I think these sort of high value items are what I call bottleneck items. Stuff that we're all going to want to buy, stuff that you're going to want to buy, as well as everyone else on the server is going to want to need. I think a good example of this is steel tools. The first people on the server who are going to be getting to level 50 engineering and starting to produce steel tools are going to be able to sell them on a market for a significantly inflated price. As all those who are just out questing and you know are going to want to need steel tools but haven't got the inclination to stop progressing and level their crafting are going to be buying them off the market and they're going to be prepared to pay a really good price for stuff like this. The same is also going to be true with bags. The bag you get given on that first starting quest only has plus 50 encumbrance and most players are not only going to be unlocking their second bag slot but also upgrading their first which is going to create this really strong bag demand same as with the tools you know particularly if you can craft them with Adolf and get some decent attributes attached to it then you're going to be commanding a really good price for these in the first day or two but that's the key here the first day or two the longer the servers are up, the more people will be getting their crafting levels up. Production of tools and bags will increase and we will see the market price drop significantly. The early profit here is to be made due to the market vacuum. There is a high demand for these bags and tools, yet low availability. And once that changes, prices will drop. The same principle though can be applied to a few other items that don't necessarily require you to level as many of your crafting skills. Iron bullets, always in short supply at the start of the game due to people being unable to find saltpeter and make gunpowder. We saw it through all the betas and a little bit into the alpha as well. As the server launches, the price of bullets goes sky high as everyone's trying to buy them because they want to level musket and then it slowly peters off over the next few days. Honestly, saltpeter is pretty easy to find in the most caves, but make use of New World Map, keep an eye on saltpeter locations, and as you are questing, just be sure to grab it as you pass by. It can be easily turned into gunpowder and then into bullets, or you can just sell the saltpeter by itself. The same is also true of Rivercress. This requires level 30 harvesting, but it is a main questline requirement. Most people are going to be getting to this quest without having level 30 harvesting. And so what do they do? Yeah, of course, they turn straight to the market. Again, bottleneck item. So hopefully you get the idea. It's all about items that are in high demand, but that aren't readily accessible at the start of the game, at server launch. 
Next, I want to move on to fishing and to some extent the town projects board. A lot of players are going to want to buy items to complete the town projects on the town projects board and also to level and increase their cooking level to some extent. And conversely, due to how slowly it levels, most people are not going to want to get into fishing in the first few days at least. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you should give up your questing and just adopt the fishing life, become Robson Green, but for those few players who do, I expect you're going to see some pretty decent gold returns. The price of fillets, the price of fish oil will be really sky high at the start. Combine this with the occasional treasure chest and I think you can expect some really very decent returns in that first few days. And this really can be true though for any of the hand in items on the town projects board because they are always going to be creating that market demand. People are always going to be wanting to fulfill these in the first few days and the first week, and so they're always going to be creating that demand. Just before we move on to talking about kind of slightly later in the week, you know, the first couple of days to the end of the week, I just want to very briefly cover buy orders. You can place buy orders on the market, and that will essentially instantly buy resources at a specific price if someone decides to sell. Now, I'm not going to be wasting much time doing this, but for me, I plan to throw up a few buy orders on the early items. For example, different gems. The drop rates in the first day aren't going to be high for them, but as people mine, they will come across them. And with limited market supply initially, not everyone is going to be aware of the price. So I'd be able to expect to pick up a few early on, which I can then choose to either resell or use to help level my jewel crafting. So what about day two, three and four? A little bit more time after release. I think we can expect the market to shift towards higher end gear items pretty quickly. I suspect it'll probably be about day three we start to see star metal tools hitting the market. Maybe the very tail end of day two. Depends how hard people go. These are going to be selling for thousands though. These are going to be really in demand. It's really the same principle as we saw with steel tools. Everyone wants them. No one can make them. The first people to get there are going to be selling these and making bank. Um, same with bags and other high-end crafted items. They're just going to be in so much demand that, that when they get there, there's not going to be very many of them for sale and a lot of people who want them. I think we will start to see jewellery become more of a um, key part of the market. You tend to not really get that much jewellery as quest drops and very rarely as random drops and they just so often don't have the attributes that you actually want. So I think we will see a demand for jewellery start to develop. So maybe some of those buy orders will actually come in kind of handy if you want to level your jewel crafting. So I think that will start to become more uh, more important and decent um, craft jewellery with proper attributes on them will be in demand. So we can also cover maybe a little bit on selling equipment drops. It can be worthwhile. If you get a decent drop and you're not going to be using it, wrong armor class, you've got something better, whatever. Particularly some of the expedition stuff, some of the, you know, you're going to be doing Amrine excavation, you know, once you get to see sort of your 20s, level 20, something like that. And you're going to be getting some decent equipment from that, some green, some blue. The single stat stuff seems to sell better, in my experience. For example, like a heavy armor chest plate with just plus strength tends to sell better than a plus strength plus dexterity combo. Always a little bit tough to know kind of how to price this stuff. Maybe 100 gold for green to the 4, 500 for blue. If things aren't selling, then you can look to kind of adjust this, adjust the price and then until you can sort of get rid of it. And so that really kind of sums up how I think the market is going to be sort of playing out over the first week. You know, beyond that, it's going to start to go into things like tuning orb components, end game gear crafting you know some of the legendary gear parts for that are going to start to go really valuable but that's getting into level 200 gear crafting and that's a that's a separate video and a, and a separate game to be playing so we won't cover that today hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea about how you can be looking to make some of the gold in the early game a lot of it is about timing the market is going to evolve a lot over those first couple of days and it's about getting the components that everyone needs to market before everyone else, realistically. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel because we've got lots more New World content on the way. And I shall see you guys all on the next one.